Hello everyone and welcome to this New Catholic Generation interview. My name is Joseph Palmer, here with my friend Ned, Ned Burry. Burry. <laughs> and today we have two very special guests. We have Jim Caviezel and Eric Roth. And we are going to be interviewing them regarding the Paul the Apostle for Christ movie. So thank you guys so much for being here. Ned, do you want to start off with the first question? Uh, certainly. Uh, Jim, so what inspired you to want to become an actor? Uh, well, uh, I guess I wasn't going to play in the NBA. I played for quite a long time and um, I had about five years of an idea that I probably should do it and uh, I busted my foot up in, in college and I started taking uh, some acting classes and, and it just came very natural. Um, and uh, you know, and I got to work with some really uh, brilliant people that really uh, saw that I you know, I had something there and then got accepted to Juilliard and just kind of kept going in that direction and uh, it took me 10 years, you know. <laughs> but then I got the movie The Thin Red Line and then the rest is history. That's awesome. awesome. So in theological circles, it's well known that Luke and Paul are, you know, are very good friends with each other, but we don't really get a lot of depth into what that relationship is like. Can you say briefly, how this movie is going to care, like specific characteristics about what makes their relationship unique. Mm. I love their relationship. There's there's a real like the wise sage mentor mm -hmm. kind of going on, but but uh, but also in a lot of ways like the big brother younger brother, you know, yeah. and yeah. and just a tremendous like Luke um, has just this tremendous love and respect for Paul and. Mm -hmm. Paul has the same thing, vice versa. It's just this respect for who Luke is and where he's come from and the culture he's yeah. come out of. And, and uh, I, said, I think people are going to see in this film something really unique, in, you know, putting, uh, putting flesh to those saints from, yeah. you know, that we've, we've listened to their readings and writings for, for, for years, for yeah. our whole lives, you know. And right. To see them come out in, in James and Jim playing Luke and Paul is just something absolutely profound. And, when you get a role like this, uh, what do you usually do to prepare for the role? And when you are on set, what is your inner monologue to get into character? Oh, uh, I don't have an inner monologue. Oh. I mean, I just uh, work my lines and uh, run them. Uh, I, you know, I, I go to mass a lot. You know, that certainly helps. <laughs> and that always helps. And my inner monologue, I guess, would probably be the rosary. There you hey, go. that that's probably Nothing the best better. best inner monologue <laughs> ever. There you go. It gets you in a zone. Exactly. Now, uh, and I ask my friends in heaven to help. You know, especially uh, Saint Genesius, he's a patron saint of factors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I try to keep it as simple as I can, um, and then you know, really listen to the other actor that I'm working with. Um, yeah. That right there is everything. I think for a lot of young actors, they don't listen. And when I was a younger actor, I, I listened a lot to the you know, people like Sean Penn that had way more experience than I did. Um, and then, of course, uh, I've had amazing uh, directors that I've worked with that, you know, that I had a lot to learn from, yeah. uh, from them, and I, I still do. I consider myself still a, a student at this it's awesome to watch the actors work it through and work yeah. it out together. It's a really great process yeah. to, to see. I, I would venture to say, and I'm not an actor, but just watching that process, that yeah. that what maybe what they anticipated going in with and what kind of evolves just organically in that process mm -hmm. becomes something new and, and, and maybe unexpected and beautiful, especially as they work the dynamic out together. It's very cool to watch that process. Uh, Jim, I have a question specifically for you. Um, you know, particularly, this is for our youth watching this video. Uh, there's so much evil in the world, and there are so many things that a lot of youth have to go through, whether it be family problems of abortion, divorce, abuse, or personal problems like depression. Um, but specifically regarding, you know, what The Passion of the Christ did for you, what uh, this movie filming did for you, um, as somebody who's had to deal with uh, adversity, what, if you could briefly say something, what would you say to the youth who are struggling to hold on to their faith when it feels impossible? I'll be very honest with you. Many children today are, are neglected from their parents. They're not, they weren't welcome in the world unless they fulfilled a need for their parents. Mm -hmm. But what I would tell you is can you love despite that? We need no look any further than Jesus. 
did he do anything that would have warranted the death he had to undergo. Mm -hmm. And yet he longed to die for us that way because he wanted to show us how much that, that he loved us yeah. and he loves you, each one of you. But we have to make the decision in this film to forgive despite that. And it isn't easy. I wouldn't you know, say that it is, but it wasn't easy for Jesus either. either. And when we say they are Father, we say, uh, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us so much of the time, we ask God to forgive us, but we won't forgive others. Um, in my life, all of the bad that happened, uh, eventually it was a good thing that it happened. And I tell you, you got to hang in there. A mm -hmm. um, great person said to me one time, Jim, set yourself apart from this corrupt generation. Be a saint, that you weren't made to fit in, that you were born to stand out. Keep praying, because one day you are going to stand out. Wow, thank you so much. So just before I got into here, my uh, uh, fiancé asked me um, if I could ask this question, and uh, what's your favorite color? I think it's blue. Blue, blue really? Okay. But, uh, yeah. It's blue. Um, nice. Huh. Hey, hey, that's a great color. There you go. Blue for Mary. There you go. That's right. <laughs> well, I wore the right thing go. today then. <laughs> <laughs> His least favorite color is red and black. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, red's my favorite color. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for watching. Uh, but again, thank you for coming. Yes. and. Uh, for everything that you've done, Jim, especially through your work, you have shown me, you've been able to help me visualize the face of love uh, through the passion specifically. Um, I know one thing that you always say is you always hope that nobody would see your face, that they would see Christ, and that, that happened for me when watching The Passion, mm -hmm. and it meant so much to me, and I hope that watching Paul the Apostle of Christ, your work and your work, uh, that it can be very much the same thing. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you guys for watching this video, and we hope you tune in next time. Take care. God bless you guys. God awesome. bless. See ya.